Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. How you all doing? Welcome back to another episode of A Dairy Man's Diary. My name is Frank, as always. And you join me in the 6M this morning as we're doing a little bit of bell carton over in the new land, which is now all being cleared. Uh, we finally got this all finished there the other day. And now um, we actually... The eagle eyed amongst you there will see that we're not lifting the regular uh, quadrant bales here. We we got a contractor in to come and bale this with some bigger uh, bales. Just because we, you know, I was running out of time, really. I wanted to, whilst the weather was good, I wanted to shift the combine back over. I wanted to get on it with my own, uh, continuing the harvest over by home farm. Uh, so we've been able to get a bit of that done. I just thought it would be easier. And it was a good cost-effective decision to actually get someone else in to get this cleared. So that's what we did. That's where we are and yeah we're just kind of taking advantage of early in the morning today we've got two fields left to go at and incredibly this is the the harvest that just won't quit on us uh and it's um they're just not quite ready for us yet so whilst we wait for those to to get fit enough to cut we're gonna get some bales cleared and then we're actually gonna get a little bit of silage cut down some third cut silage today which would be cool uh ready ready to go at it already that looks a bit better tie that end up uh but yeah we're just gonna we'll load this up get this trailer the straw onto wheels get it back to the yard where it can stay there for a little bit uh because i want to get that mowed down first uh and then we should be we'll be in a better place to leave it from there so lots going on at the moment it's been very very busy we we're trying to get these fields cleared because i want to get some cover crops in uh this is on a double spring barley rotation here uh so we're gonna put a bit of a cover crop in over the winter uh, which will probably just be put on actually we're not going to go too broad with it, uh, deep with it sorry at all there so it might end up just being put on with the grass uh, arrows really and we'll see how that goes it's going to be a bit of a mixture of all sorts there but the aim of it is is to try and get a little bit of nitrogen fixation into the soil here to see if we can reduce our costs down see if the fertilizer we've got will get keep us going for a bit longer there really um and the ultimate reason behind that is that essentially you know the costs aren't going down at the moment in fact they've, they've gone up quite significantly again they're around closing in on 700 pounds a ton uh for some suppliers which is obviously pretty terrible uh to the, the point where i was reading an article recently about a farmer who was able to order everything in advance that he needed for his pretty sizable farm it must be said but he was able to order all in when it was still less than 300 pounds a ton and he was saying now that you know if he was just to sell all that fertilizer in bulk uh, for market value uh not even attempt to turn the tractor on or turn the tractor wheel to to drill anything or establish anything he would still come out making more profit this uh this forthcoming year than he has in about the last 10 years i think he said which is really just quite disturbing if that's the case you know that's a significant uh fact but um that's where we are right now so if we can do anything in terms of and i'm sure i'm not the only smaller farmer who's looking at doing this with cover crops right now just to try and you know get a bit of soil health uh get some nitrogen fixation for free effectively uh and save how much artificial inputs we'll have to put in later on in the year then if i can get away doing that you better believe i'm going to try and do it so we'll uh we'll kind of a little bit of a play around with that uh, but we just need to get this all loaded up first and that's the reason why i kind of want to get most of these cleared we actually took the decision when we were combining the other day here the field behind us over the hedge there was actually chopped and uh, now the mainly because i knew that we we're gonna have a lot of straw uh, coming off of this field just want to be a bit careful there but also because we wanted to be able to you know really uh get on with that quickly uh we've got three fields that are, will be bailed up over at the home farm between farm one and two uh and then we so that should provide us with a little bit of extra straw we've already got quite a bit in the barn there already so we should be good for straw ourselves but what i want to do is you know it's the extra time it takes to get the field bailed get it cleared the cost of if we got the contractor to do it so there's a little bit of everything to consider there uh, you'll notice that we did do one headland here with the baler of our own so there are a few different size bales so they will be cleared up in that last load which is why we're not going to go too crazy and put another layer on this trailer no need we'll get them all onto that last one without a problem and yeah that means that we can get cracking with it really and uh, i'm happy to do that uh it was a necessary it wasn't necessary to do it get a contractor in there but he was in he was available he got it done in the half a day and in that half a day i was able to get the combine shifted over get cracking along and clear the field just over the road from farm one so you know it's a uh, 
the opportunity cost was uh, was pretty good there, in my opinion. Uh, but we're going to leave you about there. And we'll just give this a bit of a tap from the back end here, just to square those last few bales on. And then a few ratchet straps, and we're good. So we'll get this all done. We'll strap up, and then we'll catch you in on the road, hopefully, in the Mighty 6M. Okay, and so out we come. Now, this entrance is a pain. It is tight. It is very tight. I think we've done it though folks there we go no gate post hanging out in the road looks like we cleared everything and we're off so it's a nice time to get out in the 6am do something a little bit different with it other than the usual yard work stretch his legs a little bit uh there's only a 40k box there which is ample for what we need really uh usually and it's it's a little bit of a, a journey out here out to here from the farm but nothing too significant and a nice ride anyway uh and it to be honest there, the 6M handles this a treat. It doesn't really know it's on the back. No problems with it at all. Uh, we'll just take it on time, make it nice and steady, and we should be good, really. Uh, otherwise, everything else is all good. Uh, we've got a little bit of a third cut. I'm not really sure what it's going to look like. Uh, we, I've decided not to go ahead and make any more hay. We still have plenty up at uh, Farm 2, and a little bit left at Farm 1. We'll make that work. But uh, we're not going to look into getting those sheep as quite as quickly as I thought we were anyway. So that's fine. We'll make that work. But I really, what I think we just needed to do was crack on and get that cut down, get that fodder done. So as you can see, uh, this is actually ours here as well. So we'll have to get that knocked down there. We haven't done anything to that. That's essentially just uh, free silage. So uh, we'll see. No nutrients put there. No time spent putting any slurry down there either. So whilst the quality may not be good, uh it is going to be fodder at least so if we do run into a bit of a pinch at some point we'll be we'll be okay we'll make it work uh the number of visitors to the summer fair here are diminishing uh, i can't imagine they're gonna be around for much longer uh yeah the tractor rides aren't quite as attractive as they were before so we're going to just cut through the village here go back up to farm one we'll leave this on wheels like i say for a little bit because i want to get cracking whilst it's uh, early and it's not too uh not too hot i want to get this grass knocked down because i want it to dry out a little bit so we can get a bale tomorrow uh and then get that wrapped up tomorrow as well and then that should just hopefully be be all good i don't know i haven't fully decided how much we're going to knock down at the moment so we may not even get it all done in the next two days but we'll we'll see we'll see how we get going see what's on there when, when it's down as well uh and we'll have to plan it all in there's two fields of uh, barley they're still not ready like i mentioned there i'm hoping that's only gonna be if we get some a few days of good weather that should be fit so we need to kind of balance in this uh the silage with that work to be done it's a harvest that just keep kicking and it will not stop at the moment it's relentless but um i'm hoping that you know we we can we can make it work uh it is gonna be yeah it's gonna be a long couple of days let me say that much but yeah i don't think i would have been able to get any of this done really without the help of our driver jess she's been uh, magnificent of late and really helped us to kind of get cracking along there so uh clearing a lot more ground which is always good uh but yeah what we'll do is just get this all parked up into here combines actually just through the trees over there somewhere we left it kind of hidden away we'll have to get that back soon that field to be bailed up and then that will be pulled in it's just there you can see the back end of it it's sung along actually for our first season with that combine it's been magnificent it really really has certainly a lot faster than we've previously been uh, our output significantly higher uh, which is what you want to see but we do need to get started with some plowing and a bit more muck spreading as well we want to get that done because we want to get a little bit of uh, winter barley in the ground uh, and then we'll also look into get a bit of winter oats in somewhere as well and then the cover crop as well for any of the spring any of the ground that's on the either a first or a second round of uh rotation of spring barley will need to be uh covered off there you go okay now many of you will have seen the last video that will have seen the small surprise that I left in at the end uh if you did uh, there's only a couple of people who commented on it uh so well done to those who spotted it i'm just gonna l quite literally leave this parked here and we will get around to unloading this later on it's under a bit of cover there now it can it'll be fine staying on wheels for now as well okay but yeah as i mentioned there we've got quite a bit of store in here already uh quite a bit stacked up plenty up at the other yard as well 
and we should be good but yeah as i mentioned uh a few of you spotted this in the last episode but didn't a few of you said something a few of you may have missed it entirely it was right at the very end there we snuck this in there's a new holland back on the yard there now this is not mine i haven't bought it at all couldn't afford anything like that at the moment uh still paying off for a truck but it is sent to us by the same dealer that sent over the Kubota not so long ago. He is Kubota in New Holland. And thought that, seeing how I'd had a go of the orange, would like to have a go in the blue. And so I said yes. Now, those of you who remember, we used to, back at Meadow Grove there, we did actually have an old T5. Well, newish T5, actually. Uh, and then before that, a T6 as well. Go back a few years now. But we uh, haven't done anything blue for a while. Uh, mainly because dealers over there moved away and moved on. So we, we haven't really taken up that opportunity. But the opportunity presented itself. So we're going to have a bit of a blast on it today. Uh, we've got it for a little bit. A few days again. It is... Uh, this is quite a large new Holland. Bigger than anything we've got in terms of our John Deere's. It's a TS19, T7 195. Now I believe with a with a boost on there, it actually comes in a little bit over the 195. It's rated up there, so it's um yeah, it's pretty good. Not too shabby. It, one thing I will give it. No, I haven't done much in it yet at all. But this is the first real action we're gonna do with it. I actually just drove it back from the from the dealership. It drives very well. It's very comfortable. Must admit. Now this is gonna be the first real usage of it. Now typically we do this with the John Deere 68. But we're gonna crack on and do it with the 60 uh, with this new holland anyway see how we get on but yeah it's a uh, it's a nice little tractor i'm not opposed to a uh, new holland uh but, you know i think the thing that i now look at is what what second hand value is looking like because ultimately with the price of tractors these days i'm never going to be buying a new tractor again certainly can't afford one of those so where we can look to to make some money off the uh uh offer a good second hand value there even by from me selling it second hand on over uh to somebody else you know it's uh, it's worth looking into there but how how strong is the market for these you look to try and find a three four five year old tractor these days there and the market's insane for them the the north of 60 70 thousand for something of this size kind of like your 200 horsepower plus it's going to be uh it's going to be up there 60 70 80 thousand pounds so you know, when I think back to when I bought the 7710, that was about 20,000, and that was at the top end. Uh, so it's incredible where this mark has gone to. It really, really is. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to go to our right, and we're actually going to start in the field that we were doing the zero grazing with, which is a, a huge success, man. Yeah, this has been fantastic. There's not a great deal of straw in there to get after, but we will get that bailed up anyway. And then you can see the next field is actually going to be just up next to where we're going. I'm going to scoot into here. So there are a couple of fields that we will have got left to go at. Like I say, they're not quite ready. It's the one directly in front of us, and it's the one to our right over there. Hopefully, they won't be too far off being ready, because I'm sick of uh, hanging around waiting for them, like I say. But, you know, if they're not ready, they're not ready. Uh, we've got a couple of fields around here that are ready for some grass. As you can see, it's not a bad-looking third-cut crop. It's a bit stalky in places. But uh, it'll do. We'll make it work. But I think we will, uh, yeah, we'll get a little bit off this, if nothing else. Uh, like I said, combine's all parked up here anyway, looking good, kind of tucked out of the way of the trees. And then uh, we're just waiting to to get through. Uh, hopefully, like I say, it won't be too far away. But uh, we will see how we get on here now. It should be which way I've got my hydraulics. There you go. Perfect. There's the rear. There goes the front. Hey, there we are. Nice little layout here. I do like that joystick. That works very nice indeed. Everything nice and bang on that uh, monitor. I don't have like on the John Deere there, the pillar or the side uh, on the five post there. We're down to a four post cap here and it looks very nice. Very spacious, very airy. All right, let's... Uh, Let's crack on, shall we? You can see where I did the, a couple of extra rounds with the zero uh, grazer around the side sheet. You can just see where that kind of demarcation is la is there, but it's looking okay. As is, by the way, this crop of spring barley. Very impressed with how, how that's standing up at the moment. Uh, it's had some a bit of a battering, and it's still 
not quite ready but yeah it's looking all right this, the ground on this hillside here is pretty decent i must say all right so we'll get around there a little bit beautiful love working these fields on the hillside here it's got such a cracking view over the farm and over the valley there it's just brilliant it really is this cab is mighty quiet though front and rear mower going you can barely notice them love that let us know down below if you currently are driving the blue of new holland there if you have driven them what you think of it if you got this machine in particular how it's been going for you particularly if you got some hours cracked onto it now as well let us know what that's like but yeah it just wants to give really i wonder what speed i can get up because it seems like it wants to just keep pushing okay just having a little bit of a play around with the spools see if i can make them do what i want them to there we go there's the front one going down the back one back one's down yes all right let's see what it does up this hill here 21k good lord i mean i know it's a thinnish looking crop here but that is obscenely good and it's grunting a little bit there but nothing too outrageous it's flying its way up the hill that's for sure love it perfect stuff so yeah we're probably just gonna keep pushing through with this little pallet get the rest of this fir third cut now actually knocked down and then we'll leave it like this as you can see there's not much out there so it should rake up nice and quickly and then we'll be on to getting this all bailed up so we're going to do a couple of fields between farm one and farm two and then we'll see what we're looking like we might take it down to the some of the the ground down by the train line there as well uh, and have a look into that get a little bit of a nibble on see what it's looking like in terms of time frame but ultimately yeah we're out in the blue got new holland on the farm here for a little bit of time uh and we'll hopefully try and use it with everything get it onto the baler as well and see how it handles but yeah never know what might happen with this definitely something to keep an eye out for until next time though i hope you have enjoyed i've been frank this has been a little bit of an update from me at challenge valley here i hope you have enjoyed if you have and you've yet to do so don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe as usual and we will see you all in the next one until then do stay safe enjoy what you're doing as always and we'll catch you later